good morning students in today's class i'll be talking about nucleophilic substitution reactions these reactions are also known as the sn reactions the sn reactions are of two types sn1 which i did in my previous class in today's class we'll be doing the sn2 reactions the sn2 type of reactions the word two is your keyword and this 2 stands for 2 together which means 2 steps will take place together technically it is not 2 together I just say 2 together to make it easier for you to understand the mechanism and it could be a key word for you to for you to make it easier actually the word means bimolecular why so? I would be taking that up a little later. Whenever you have a nucleophilic substitution reaction, X, the halogen, being more electronegative, takes the electron pair with itself and goes off as an X minus, while the nucleophile attacks. So actually, there are two steps happening in this reaction. One, X leaves, and second, nucleophile attacks. In SN1, these two steps happened one after the other. Whereas in SN2, it's two together. Both these steps will happen simultaneously. I'll be taking an alkyl halide. I'm taking a primary alkyl halide in this case. Let the alkyl halide be of the type methyl halide. Could be chloride, could be bromide, anything. And you have to attack a nucleophile onto it. Now, actually what happens is your mechanism involves one step. This is your methyl halide or the chloride. The chloride starts to leave and the nucleophile needs to attack. And this nucleophile attacks from the opposite end. Why do you think this would happen? Cl goes on leaving as a negative and nucleophile attacks as a negative. If your nucleophile attacks from the same side, there would be repulsion from the outgoing Cl- minus towards the incoming Nu-. minus. These two negatively charged identities, the leaving nucleophile and the attacking nucleophile would repel each other. Therefore, nucleophile never attacks from the side the halide is leaving. So, you would have a state like this which is always enclosed in a square bracket. Square bracket in organic means unstable, intermediate identity, or it is also called as a transition state. This transition state is unstable. Why so? You can see that carbon is showing almost five bonds. One, two, three, four, five. Five bonds in a carbon, a carbon is never possible. Why? Five sigma bonds will require five orbitals. Five orbitals means S, P3 and you would require a D also. Whereas carbon being the first member of group 14, never has d orbitals due to absence of d orbitals this five bonded identity is not existing it cannot be isolated it is just for the explanation part that this is how the mechanism might be taking place it is known as the transition state or the intermediate state it is a theoretical concept you cannot isolate it finally when this reaction further moves ahead, the Cl- ultimately leaves and you are left with a carbon, a nucleophile and three hydrogens. You can clearly see the nucleophile is attacking from the side opposite to the Cl leaving. Hence, the product is single. Secondly, it is always inverted you would get a single inverted product in this case. So, SN2 mechanism, the two steps happen together. It is called as a bimolecular reaction. What does that mean? The speed of the reaction is dependent on this one step alone. There are no two steps. It is just a single step. So, the rate of the reaction is dependent on the single step and which is dependent on your two reactant. So, it depends on two reactants. That is why it is called as a bimolecular reaction also said that the SN2 reaction follows second order kinetics 
Second order kinetics means it depends on two reactants. The rate of reaction is dependent on alkyl halide as well as the nucleophile. The rate is dependent on two reactants. Such a reaction is called as a second order reaction. And you have a single product which will always be inverted. The other important thing is that I have deliberately taken an alkyl halide which is primary. Had these three hydrogens been R groups, which means your reaction would have been something like this, where you would have had a carbon with three R groups, a leaving halide and an attacking nucleophile. This attack would have been difficult. Why so? The presence of bulkier R groups would not have allowed this to attack. This fact is called as steric hindrance. Something like a traffic block. Steric hindrance, space may hindrance. Space may, there is a problem that there is a hindrance. You cannot move in. So the nucleophile faces steric hindrance from the three R groups if the mechanism would have been like this. Therefore, SN2 is not generally taking place for a 3 degree alkyl halide. SN2 the order is 1 degree is preferred, then 2 degree and then 3 degree. So if you have an alkyl halide of the type this and you have an alkyl halide of the type this, this, you know that two steps have to take place together and it would be possible only if there is not steric hindrance for the incoming nucleophile. So your keywords I would advise the two keywords could be two together and less steric hindrance could be your keywords. So those molecules where the carbon from which the halogen is leaving is less sterically hindered means has smaller groups, lesser bulkier groups. The mechanism followed is SN2. Whereas, had it been an SN1 reaction, in case of an SN1 reaction, you know that in for an SN1 reaction, it is one after the other. Therefore, you have two steps, you have two products, and you have formation of a carbocation. So, that could be a keyword for SN1 mechanism, the two keywords could be one after the other and formation of a carbocation. More stable are the carbocation, the mechanism preferred is SN1. And we know it that for an SN1 mechanism, therefore the order for an SN1 mechanism would be where carbocation is more stable. So the order is exactly the reverse. With this, I sum up the two mechanisms, SN1 and SN2 and close my class here. Thank you.